All right, good morning, class, and welcome to week number two, and that is right, week number two of your 7314 class, which is your reference class. As always, I'm your professor, Dr. J.S.K. Austin, and this will be the first check-in video for this uh, class this semester, but it will not be the last. In fact, let me go ahead and remind you all of the check-in video issues. So, every week that we do not have sync sessions, we did have a sync session last week, so that's why there was no check-in video last week, but every week that we have uh, that we don't have sync sessions, I am going to record a check-in video. These are not required. They are optional unless I say they are required. But if I say they're optional, they're optional. And these are basically just ways to have a connection with the professor, basically. So um, just to say it really quickly, there are two types of students. There are uh, students who just want to get the A and get the grade, complete the degree, and move on. And then there are students who do want some sort of ongoing connection during the course and some sort of ongoing dialogue uh, with the instructor. And so these check-in videos are really for those who fall into that second category. Um, so again, I'm going to, unless something is coming up and I'm too busy, I'm going to upload a check-in video pretty much every week that we do not have a sync session. And in these check-in videos for the reference class, for the most part, the check-in videos center around um, trying to introduce you to some sort of database or resource that you are, um, that you may encounter in your librarian practice. Now, when I say that I am introducing you to the database, this is not meant to be a, uh, a tutorial. Again, it's meant to be an introduction to tell you what the database does, who it's for, when you would use it, that sort of thing. And just to contextualize what the databases do, what what some of the databases do, what they're used for, all of that good stuff. Now, there are times when I'm not going to uh, have the check-in video focus on a database, and that will include, there will be a Wikipedia check-in video, and there will be a LibGuide check-in video, and maybe some others that do not focus on databases. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, especially the data, the check-in video that we have this week will not focus on, um, on databases. And then also next week, we will talk a little bit about APA. So that will not focus on databases either. But for the most part, they will. Um, but yes, uh, one thing that I wanted to do really quick is just sort of, well, the first thing I need to do actually is teach you all how to speed up the video. Now I'm going to put in the announcement instructions on how to speed up a video but again as you all have noticed i am very slow in my speech and so the way to make these check-in videos bearable the way to actually watch them and uh get something out of them and not get bored to death or get too frustrated is to speed me up because i talk so slow and then if you speed me up as you are listening to me going faster as you're listening to me talking faster hopefully that will ease the pain of getting through the video if you find the video painful but yes students for the most part tell me that because they have the option to speed videos up when they do that uh that makes the videos um uh, not as much of a chore to watch so having said that let's go ahead and show you all how to speed up a youtube video if you don't already know and then again plus the instructions will be in the announcement hold on one minute pause all right, so yeah, let me go ahead and show you all how to speed a check-in video up. So what we're going to do, oh, I need to make myself smaller here. Okay, so what we are going to do is come over here. And actually, I want to move this down a little bit because we are kind of high up there. Okay, so we've got a song here and we're going to play it at regular tempo. up what you do is uh, come to this little icon right here the settings icon right here to play back speed and you see if you speed me up to 1.5 or 1.75 you are actually still going to hear everything and so now you can recognize the difference in the speed there much more up tempo and this is going to be the result of what you get when you actually um Yes, if you speed me up, then you're going to have something that needs to go a little faster. And again, I'm going to make it more bearable to listen to because I'm, uh, I'm a slow talker. So there you go. And I grew up in the rural south. I just talk slow. But you don't have to listen to me to talk slow. You speed me up. So there you go. All right. And now that we've got that out of the way, what we're going to do is come back into the course. And what we're going to do from here, and hopefully I am talking faster now if you sped me up, is we're going to do a state of the course update. And then after we do the, the state of the course update, I'm going to make sure that you all know how to use two common 
uh, resources that are going to be very helpful for you if you need to actually find additional sources for papers or anything like that. But these are things that librarians, reference librarians need to have in their toolkit. And these are resources that most libraries that you all are going to end up at are going to have some form of. And so the two resources are um, the journal finder feature that you will find on the zoo's website. And then I'm also going to teach you about interlibrary loan if you don't know about these things already. For those of you who do know about them, I apologize. If you want to stop the video, that's fine. It's just that I cannot assume the knowledge of the students. Um, a lot of you who do work in libraries already know about these things, but then a lot of you who haven't worked in libraries before may not be aware of these things. And I do want those of you who do work in libraries currently to know that not every library school student already works in libraries. And in fact, I did not already work in libraries when I was in library school. I was actually a newspaper reporter at the time. Okay. And journalism pay is terrible. And so I stuck with libraries. But yes, let's get into the state of the course update. So first things first, when it comes to announcements, I'm not actually... Uh, Hopefully people's, um, well, hold on. Okay, I'm actually going to uh, slap myself down there just so that uh, some names can be kind of hidden just because, again, these videos are going to be on the internet. So, um, yeah, people don't really find these videos because only my students actually ever look for them. However, I'm still going to cover your names up. Haven't said that, yes, I believe that when I... Um, when I actually made this announcement, I heard from 24 out of 26 of you in the uh, introductions post as far as you all telling me, you know, where you are and who you are and a little bit about yourselves. And so for those of you who have not done this already, which I think is only two people, and you may have actually done this since the announcement, since I put this announcement up a few hours ago. But if you have not done the introduction post, go ahead and do the introduction post, get it up, and that way I can get you a partner assigned and you can go ahead and make contact with your your partner and once you make contact with your partner y'all can schedule a time to meet up virtually or if they're in your metro area if you want to meet up in person again just be safe um you know meet up in a public place um be aware of covid uh we are still i believe at the tail end of the pandemic we mostly uh moved on but you know there's good reason to still be concerned about the pandemic and all these covid viruses uh floating around and everything okay um but yeah Go ahead and reach out to your partner. And once you uh, reach out to your partner, y'all can get going. And that uh, assignment, again, is due on, we will know in just a moment, it will be due on February the 18th. So you have a little under a month, but time does go back fast. And you do have a, um, you have the database unassignment that's not going to take very long, but it's due on February the 4th. So just remember that you actually have two non regular discussion board type assignments that are going to be due in February. And this one that's due on February 4th is coming right up. In fact, it's coming up in about two weeks from when I'm recording this video is when that's going to be due. But then, yes, uh, this will be due in about four weeks from when I'm um, recording this video. But once you actually schedule a time with your partner and actually do the interaction, I will just put you all at ease and say I don't think it's going to take you very long to write the paper at all. So um, I do think that a month is plenty of time. I've taught this class for a while now, and a month has been plenty of time for most of the students in the past. Okay, so that's the first thing I want you all to be aware of. And then what else I want you all to be aware of is that your uh, discussion board prompt for weeks two and three is actually going to be uh, kind of like a two-part prompt. So let me actually get in there. Oh, Lord, why not? Okay, uh, discussion board prompt two, that is also not due until February 4th, as you see there. So this is not a uh, discussion board prompt that is like a week two prompt. This is gonna go throughout week two and week three. And so you are actually going to have, uh, ooh, uh, I gotta, Sorry, I got to fix that date, not September the 3rd. I'm going to fix that date, but you should have one post up and that one post is actually, uh, that one post should actually be up by January the 28th, not September the 3rd. So I apologize for that. Uh, there are so many little things that you have to update in the class. And so I apologize every, every semester I miss a few things, but we try to get back on track. So just remember, um, there is no September in this class because this is a spring class. 
this will change to January the 28th. OK, so that's what I want you to know. You you actually I would prefer that you all do one post in week two and one post in week three. But I know you all are kind of just starting the semester out. So you may be playing some catch up and everything. So if you get both of your posts in on uh, during week three, that is fine, too. You're not going to be. In other words, what I'm saying is you're not going to lose points if you don't have your uh, one of your posts up by January 28th, if that makes sense. I would prefer to have one of the posts up by January 28th, but as long as they're both up by February 4th, you're going to be okay. All right. So I want that to be out there. And now that that is out there, that is pretty much it for the state of the course update. So let's talk about Journal Finder and let's talk about Interlibrary Loan. All right. So the Journal Finder feature, a lot of times what that is used for is when you are you know something exists, you know something's out there, uh, maybe you found it on Google Scholar or something like that, but you didn't want to pay for it. You didn't want to, uh, so you saw it on Google Scholar and you saw it was behind a paywall or something, you didn't want to pay for it, and you were trying to see if your local library or in the, or your university library or whatever, but if a library that you had access to that you were a part of, if that library had access to the resource that you wanted, right? So let me give you an example of that, and then you will see what I mean, because if you are aware of Journal Finder and Interlibrary Loan, these things can really save you a lot of money in the long run. So let's, um, let's actually go to, again, let's go to Google Scholar. All right, now I'm going to pause while I do some of this searching because I don't want to uh, make video longer with that. Okay, so let's say we go to Google Scholar and we've got this sort of thing going on right here. Okay, so I did a search for open educational resources. Now, when you see these, when you see these links over here, that means that the article is actually going to be something that you can just get for free off the web. And a lot of times I do look for this as well, because one thing that I don't do and one thing that the school doesn't want me to do because they don't want any copyright um, lawsuits coming against them based on stuff that I do. But yes, one thing that I do is if I find something is actually available on the open web through Google Scholar like this, then a lot of times I will put that link into Canvas so that people can access that material, right? But if something is not, um, if something is not freely accessible on the web in an open way like this, I would say that this is an open access thing. It's something that uh, you can access without a login. It's something that you can access without paying, right? So yeah, this is more open access, but let's say you have something here like this where you don't have that link to the side but you still want this article. So what do you do? Do you pay for it? Well, first let's click on it and see if it's gonna ask us to pay for it. Uh, whatever, uh, I don't wanna, yeah, so, yeah, so we don't have our full article here, we just have our abstract, and then we have some, um, we have some references and that sort of thing. And this is saying, if you want to buy this, oh goodness, this, is this a chapter? A chapter might be different, hold on, let me pause again. All right, yeah, book chapter is not necessarily the best way to come across this if you're looking for Journal Finder um, or if you're looking to learn how to use Journal Finder. Now, one thing that I will say, though, is that I do actually let some of these nonlinear things stay in the videos. I know the videos would be shorter if they were linear, but the search process is not linear. So I don't want to give you all the false impression that, oh, you're just going to do all this reference work and it's going to be linear and you're not going to have to divert and take a different path or anything like that. As you can see, I am about to take a different path and not the path that I was going to do because I was going to try to do, I mean, I was going to try to do journal finder with that other thing and that other thing turned out to be a book chapter instead of a journal article. And what I'm trying to demonstrate works better with journal articles. So yes, this is not linear and I apologize that it makes the videos longer, but also it is helpful to have uh, something like that that makes the videos longer because I do want you all to see that searches again are not linear. Now this might be something that's a little better. Hopefully our, um, hopefully our library has this journal and then I can show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, this is an abstract. Um, for a journal, this is a journal article, five critiques of open educational res of the open educational resources movement. And you all are going to, if you're, if you've not already heard about open educational resources, then you will hear about them. Okay. Um, in your library school education and probably later in this class, I will give them some mention. So all you have here is an abstract, right? So let's see if instead of paying for this article, we can find it through. Mizzou libraries. So 
we actually have the journal title here and it's teaching in higher education. So let's go here and then where we go to the, when we go to the Mizzou homepage, library.missouri.edu, let's go to a specific journal. Okay, it's going to ask you to log in. Come on, big boy. All right, I'm going to, oh, okay. I was about to say I'm going to pause it because it's taking so long, but here we go. All right, so teaching in higher education. Let's put that in and see if that is, all right, teaching in higher education. And let's click search. All right, and so you see that we have at least some coverage of this. Now, what you need to do is check and make sure that the article's date is within the date range that is offered at your institution that you're using. So this is an article from 2013. Let's see what our full text access is. 1996 to present. So this is something that is within the coverage, and that's good. Uh, 2013 is, um, it's old enough that it doesn't fall into this one year full text delay, but it's after 1996, so theoretically we should have this. So if I click this, oh Lord, well, I am going to pause this. Okay, yeah, and I did take a few seconds to load, but here we are right now in 2013, bada boom. Um, we want to, because what this does is it brings you to a, uh, a catalog record for the journal itself. So this is a source catalog record within, um, within this database. And what you would do is you would go to the date and volume. So this is volume 18, 2013. Let's do, yes, this is volume 18. All of this is volume 18. And then we can go to issue number eight. We need issue number eight. That is right here. And when you click that, you will be brought to the issue. And actually, this uh, this won't always happen, but this was actually the first article that appeared in this issue. So it's right there as number one for us. Five critiques of the open educational access movement. You can click the article title, and then you can scroll down, and you've got the full text there. Plus, uh, and this won't always be the case, uh, a lot of times it will just be HTML or just PDF. But in this case, you have both. So if you wanted to actually download the PDF, you could do that as well this way. And now you've got the actual PDF as it appeared in the article right there. All right. So that was actually a perfect example. Most of the examples that I get uh, in this class do not lend themselves as easily as that one did. So I'm actually counting that as luck. And so you should have a general concept of, okay, this is what you do with the journal finder and this is a way to prevent yourself from having to actually buy the article from online. If you are a member of this library, then you can go ahead and access the article that way. And your public libraries a lot of times have this feature as well or similar things in the works. So don't assume that just because it's a public library that you won't be able to do this. You can try this with your public libraries too. Okay. Now there are going to be times, however, when, and I'm actually probably going to go back to the book chapter for this. So yes, let's uh, make me small again here and let's go back. Um, all right, let's see. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go back here and scroll up here. All right. Open educational resources, a review of the literature. And what we have here is a book chapter again that we do not have access to, and you do not want to pay that $30 in order to get it, but you do want it. So there is another thing that you can do to get it, and I'm going to show you what that is. That is our trusty friend interlibrary loan, and most libraries these days do offer interlibrary loan, So, and that's public and academic. So if you are ever in need of interlibrary loan in an article of this or a book chapter, actually a lot of things, I should point out that a lot of things are actually offered through interlibrary loan, not just um, books and article title, uh, article, journal articles, sorry, not just books and journal, ar journal article, oh, la, la, la. not just books and journal articles, not just book chapters and journal articles. So a lot of libraries actually do interlibrary loan physical books, physical materials, as well as dissertations and theses as well as um, other physical materials. So you might be able to get even music or novels or um, magazines or uh, comic books or even video games. Some 
Libraries actually do exchange video games even through interlibrary loan. There is a host of materials that can be offered through interlibrary loans. You just need to see what you can get away with at a particular library that you are a member of. And again, don't forget that public libraries do interlibrary loan as well. So let's go ahead and request this item because we otherwise do not have access to it. And I'll just show you a rundown of how you would request the item. And then from there, if you ever do want to request um, an item in this fashion, um, you won't see me actually retrieve the item because it's going to take the interlibrary loan a few days to get it to me. But this will give you a general idea of how the process works. All right. So and I've got a my password has been updated. So let's go ahead and change that. All right. And so, oh. Well, also, uh, I forgot that I ordered this. And this, again, this wasn't something that I needed for school. This was just something that I wanted to read. I'm actually very interested in coyotes eating cats. I think it's a weird thing that happens. It's a very morbid thing for me to be focused on. But I, uh, we, I have a small child now and she likes animals and we have a small dog as well. Um, and I just, uh, we, there are coyotes in the area that I live in now. So we make sure our pets are inside. And so I just wanted this, this. So this is actually good. I did this on January the 10th. This was something that I didn't have access to otherwise, but, um, interlibrary loan came through for me. And as you can see here, this is the interlibrary loan information. They went and they got this for me and completed that interlibrary loan request. And it only took them. Well, it took them less than 48 hours to do it. So uh, with Mizzou, there is a pretty quick turnaround on these most of the time. But let's say you did want to go ahead and make a new request for, uh, in this case, a book chapter. And a lot of times they will scan and send you book chapters. So what you can do is you can go to new request. In this case, you want to get that book chapter, not the book. So let's go to book chapter. And then all we have to do is fill out these fields and we should have all of this information over here. So the book title, the book title is the Handbook of Educational Communi Communications and, and Technology. It's right here. The author or editor. So uh, for the book, now we're not talking about these chapter uh, authors right here, um, but the book author or editor, which I can't find readily right here. And if I can't find it readily for the sake of time with this video, unless it's required, I'm not going to do it. And it's not required, so I'm not going to do it. So I am going to skip that part, but we are going to put the book chapter title. So that was the book title. This is the book chapter title. And so that is the chapter title there. And we are going to put our authors here. So I am going to go ahead and paste those in. So let's put those there. So we've got them. And then we can scroll down. Anything that's not required, and obviously anything that's not required, you don't have to do. But the more information you use, the easier it is for the interlibrary loan staff to find and retrieve the item. So we've got these things and then uh, some other things that we can add. Place of publication. I don't, a lot of this stuff just isn't readily there. Um, there are editors. We can go ahead and plug those in if we want so yeah we'll put our editors back up there boom and then place the publication if we got that let's see if we can find these other little pieces of information but if we can't find them we don't need them let's see uh if it will let me access actually because this looks like it i don't know this looks like it might have actually been a free download but i'm still gonna yeah, it is a free download, but I'm still going to go through the motions anyway, just so you all can see the process. So this didn't work out quite as well as what I did the last time, but still, oh well. Um, so we are looking at, with the front matter here, uh, and sometimes you just got to fish until you find things that you need. I am going to post. All right, it does look like our place is going to be New York for this. I am going to plug, uh, not there. I am going to plug place of publication, New York. Um, our publisher is Springer. It looks like our year was, was it 2014? I believe it was. Yeah, this most recent year here, 2014. Um, ugh, why do I keep doing that? All right, 2014. And then also, if you can get an edition number, that is good as well. Again, this, is, uh, this isn't quite what we wanted just because um, 
you actually do have access to, it looks like, oh, well, it looks like at least it's not access to the full book. In fact, no, it isn't. So I don't feel quite as bad now. Because at first I was like, oh, this is access to the full book. But then I looked up here and I see 45 pages, so it's not. Again, this is not linear, folks. But this is the fourth edition, so we're going to put that in. Uh, inclusive pages is going to be required, and I may not find that that easily here, so I'm actually going to go back out to here and try this. And so our inclusive pages, it looks like those are going to be 781 to 789. And we can plug those here. All right, I'm going to skip this information, um, but you can put ISBNs in if you need to. Um, give the interlibrary loan people about two weeks, I would say. So I am actually going to put February 4th as not needed after this date, where you accept it in a language other than English, no. And you don't necessarily need to put that information in either, and so I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and submit the request. And probably within 72 hours, I am going to get some sort of um, either article or link from the interlibrary loan people letting me know uh, right now it's listed in my outstanding request, but I'll get an email when they've actually retrieved it and it'll be in my electronically received articles and then all I have to do is click view. Okay, and that is how that works. Um, so again, I hope you sped me up because uh, I know that um, listening to somebody for 26 uh, minutes these days is not easy. You know, when I was in uh, when I was in school way back in the day, yes, it was actually uh, quite common to have to listen to somebody lecture for 50 minutes or an hour and a half or something like that. But for the people who grew up in the uh, and people whose minds just formulated within the uh, the tablet era era that we're in right now and the Wi-Fi and gadget era that we're in right now, a lot of people who came up in that era and who are younger than me, they don't have that same type of attention span where they can listen to somebody for 26 minutes. So I do hope you have uh, sped me up and I do hope that this was enlightening and uh, taught you a few things. And next week we will talk about two common APA mistakes because again, I will be checking for proper APA. And I know some of you, because it happens every semester, some of you are going to get the APA wrong anyway, even after I give you this warning. But next week, yes, I'm going to give you a warning of two common mistakes that people make all the time and that I count off for when they make them. And if you make the mistakes on two of the assignments, you will be counted off. Those two assignments being the um, the Wikipedia edit assignment and the virtual reference practice paper, which is your first paper, which is what you're preparing for now with your partner. With those two assignments, yes, you have to get your APA right um, and avoid the two mistakes that I'm going to be talking about or you will be counted off. That I will not be checking for correct APA within your discussion boards because those are more informal. And then I will also not count off for improper APA uh, on the semester long project because quite frankly, those semester long projects take me a long time to grade. And if I were checking for proper APA on top of everything else, it would take me even longer to grade. So that is why I do not do that. So we are done with this video, which I, again, I hope you have sped up. I am Dr. Jace and I am so glad to have you in this space. Hopefully we are going to have a wonderful and successful semester and I will see you next week. Thank you.